Hi there, this is Penelope. This is topic one, class three, where we're just looking at a really basic review of arithmetic skills. Some of you may not need to spend very much time on this. Some of you might need to spend a little bit more. Okay, technical hitch there. Um, now, BODMAS. What is BODMAS? BODMAS tells us the rules to govern the order of how we do stuff. It's just a rule. It's just like a road rule. Now, we can either use our calculator, which does know how to do things, or we can remember this, this little acronym, which is one of many, where we remember the, the, the way in which we have to proceed. Brackets, order, which is another way f word for power. Then divide or multiply, and you could do it the other way around and then addition and subtraction or you could do that the other way around it stops this sort of thing happening now you might say if i'm just going to go left to right that's three plus four that's seven times two which is equal to 14. somebody else might go well that's three plus four times two four times two is eight and that's 11. So we can't be having different answers. Maths is consistent, so we have to have the same rules. Everybody follows the rules. Your calculator has it all set up for you, so it, it does what it's meant to do. So just remember BODMAS. It's important with numbers, and it's important with letters later on when we get into algebra. I don't know why that keeps flicking up. Right, now we looked at fractions in class 2. Now we're just going to look at fractions again, but with decimals in mind. Now, this is a very simple example to convert 0.25. You probably know that it's a quarter, but it does go through the, the logic. Let's have a look at another one. 0.625 divided by 1. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the top by 100. And we're going to divide the bottom, sorry, divide, and then the bottom is going to be multiplied by 100. That gives us 6 to 5 divided by 100. Now we can start dividing by 5. So we divide it by 5 once, and we get, uh, what do we get, 125 over, oops, that's 1,000. I need to multiply it by 1,000. Because I need to multiply it by one and the number of noughts that it is so that sorry the number of figures that it is so it's 0 0.625 that's three digits so i'm going to multiply it by one and three zeros all right one two five divided it by five divide the bottom line by five i get 200 i'm sure we can simplify that divide it by five again and you get 25 over 40 and then if i divide each top and bottom by five again i get five over 8. So we can say that 0.625 is equal to 5 over 8. Some other simple examples, 2 over 5, okay, that's, we could divide that 5s into 2, or we could use our calculator and we get that that is 0 0.4. 0 0.4 is going to be 4 over 10, which is going to be 2 over 5. All right. 0 0.04 will be 0 over 4. Now we need to multiply that by what? If we multiply it by 10, let's just see what happens. Okay, so that would be 0.4 multiplied by 10, so we'd have 0.4 over 10. It, it hasn't got rid of the decimal points, so we need to multiply it again by 10. So then it would be 4 over 100, which we could simplify as 2 over 50 by dividing top and bottom by 2. Okay, 44. Let's just go straight to saying that's 44 out of 100. So it's 22 out of 50, so 11 
out of 45. Now you can use a calculator, but sometimes you don't have your calculator. 1 out of 6, again, this one we're going to have to say, well, that's 6 into 1. And then we could, or we could use our calculator for that one. And we'll talk a bit more about how we can approximate that shortly. Now, sometimes we can talk about, um, sorry, don't know why that's there. Um, we can talk about digits that recur and the shorthand that we need to do that. If we've got one digit that recurs, 0.4444, we just put a dot over the four. If we have a pair of them, in the second example, it's 3-5 repeats. So we just want to say that that pattern, 3-5 repeats. The last example there, the 908 repeats. So we're going to put a dot over the beginning and a dot over the end of our pattern that repeats. And it's just interesting that the denominators of the of the fractions that do have repeating decimals are there, 3, 6, 7, 9, 11. You don't need to know that. It was just something that was interesting. Right. Can you measure that? Can you measure a length that's as accurate as that? Maybe you could if you had a super duper laser measure of some, but probably not. And do you need to? We need to approximate some to some sensible sort of something we can measure rather than something we we can't we could use could approximate by writing to a sig number of significant figures or to a certain number of decimal places. Now what we're doing is we are approximating. So let's look at 7.6183. And say we want to to approximate this correct to three significant figures and you might write it as SF or significant figures okay so it's three significant figures that means three figures wherever they are so we're going to go one two three and look at the fourth one now the fourth one is more than eight sorry more than five it's more than halfway so we can round up so then we would say that 7.6183 is approximately equal to 7.62 correct to three significant figures so we've approximated let's do it again and this time we're going to do it correct to three decimal places so we're going to look at the numbers that are after the decimal point this time. So it's going to be approximately equal to. So we're going to look at the decimal places. That, that That's what we call the, the numbers after the decimal point. So we're going to look at 1, 2, 3. Then we're going to look at the fourth one, which is 3. That's less than halfway. So we're going to round down. So it would be 7.618. So it's not... A number that's hugely different. It's going to be a number that's round about what you're talking about. Sometimes we can take a very big number and shorten it so that it's it's got way fewer digits in it, or sometimes we need to to write it bigger. So for the first one, 75.45, we might have had it like this. It's 75. Now the decimal place was there. So I'm going to move it over three. 
So I need four, that's one, two, and I need to put a third one to there. The negative means I'm going to go backwards, so I'm going to go one, two, I'm going to move the decimal place, two, and it's going to be 5.6 times 10 to the negative two. Scrub that. It's just say <laughs> it's too late on a Saturday afternoon to be doing this. I actually need to go. Uh, can't even get rid of it. Um, I need to go two to the other way. So I need to go two to the other way. One, two. So I need to put a zero in there. So it went one, two. So now the decimal place is there. And really, what we were talking about is zero, zero, five, six. No room. Okay. The next one is time 10 to the power of 5, so I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So then the answer would just be 7, 4, 3. This idea of writing it with a power of 10 is called scientific notation. And we just need a single number here, and then we adjust it by powers of 10. So for this one, if we want to write all of this as powers of 10, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it would be nine times ten to the power of seven. The next one, if I want to get it to have one digit before the decimal place, so it would be three point six, and I need to multiply that by one, two, three, and one more there. So to get it back to what it was, it needs to be 4, but going to the left. Now these are just powers. We're just talking about powers here. Now we can use Excel to do this. It's not worth doing it if you've only got one number to do. But if you've got a whole lot to do, then it does make sense to just go and do the whole lot on Excel. So you click on the cell that you want to to format, then you would choose scientific. The default comes up as two, but you can change that. So in this one here, we've got three, four, five, six, seven. We've used that to format the cell, scientific notation to format the cell. And it's come up with this really crazy looking thing, which says 3.46e plus 04, what that means is it's writing 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 as 3.4567 times 10 to the power of 4. That's just what that means. Now, that's just using standard notation to do that. We can also use it to approximate. And again, you wouldn't do it for one number you'd do it for a whole lot. Don't round in the middle. That's a really important thing. So don't approximate a number until the end. So if you've got a whole lot of calculations, don't approximate in the middle, because that means your answer is going to be a little bit wrong, a little bit wrong, a little bit wrong, all the way through. We still need to know what we're doing in terms of whether we go up or down. This one, we're going to go to, say, um, round to one digit, and or one digit after the decimal place. We look at the next one, it's two, so it's less than five, so we're going to just, it'll just go two, one, and it'll go down. The next one is actually going to go up, but that's okay. Just rounding it as long as we know which way we're doing it, it's fine to just use the round command. But there are more specific commands. Round up and round down. So if you look at the, the first one rounding down, we know it has to be rounded down if we're going to go, say, to 2dp. That's the 2. We know that the third digit is less than five, so it's got to go down. So we'd use the round down and tell it to go to 2dp. 
uh, if we wanted to go to 1 dp for the next number, 34567.882, we know what we're doing. We've got a round up. So we'd use the command command equals round up. And then A2 is where the, the number that we're working with is written. And we want it to 1 dp. And we know it has to be up. Now, if we're going to go to significant figure, say we want to go to one significant figure, have a look at the number that we've got there, three, four, five, six, seven. The second number, the four, is less than five, so we're going to round down, but we effectively need to get rid of four numbers here, four digits. So we need to use minus four to get rid of them. The next one again, look at it. We're going to go to maybe two significant figures. So have a look at that. Have a look at the third digit. The third digit is five. So we need to use round up. And then we need to get rid of three digits. There. So we're going to go the minus three. We're going to get rid of that. And that gives us three, five, and then all those zeros. Now, any number, any real number, and we come to numbers that aren't real right in the last topic of the course, but in real numbers, can be put on this number line. Now, you don't need to put numbers on a number line, but sometimes it's useful to compare numbers. Is it to the right or is it to the left? But any real number can be put on a number line. And sometimes when you're thinking about addition, if you're a bit muddled about whether you're moving, you're going to end up with a negative number or a positive number, it might be helpful to, to do this. If you're adding a positive number, it goes to the right. If you're subtracting or adding a negative number, it goes to the left. Adding a negative number is the same as subtracting a positive. Okay? And subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive. Let's summarize that. Whoops. Okay, sorry, got the wrong slide. Adding a negative is the same as subtracting a positive. Subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive. Now, sometimes we don't talk about a number on the number line. We talk about a sort of a space on the number line, if you like. Our answer might be between a couple of numbers. So it's, it says there our answer x is going to be somewhere between 1 and 3. The funny symbol there talks about, that talks about less than or equal to. So it says 1 is less than or equal to, to x, which is less than or equal to 3, and we use square brackets. So if we we're going to draw that, we'd use a colored in circle at 1 and a colored in circle at 3, and we'd say our answer is somewhere in there. When it's just less than, we use open circles. That is my dog barking. So x would be somewhere in here. And we'd use a ruler, of course. Now you can mix and match. You can have a rounded bracket and a square bracket. And the rounded means it's not included in your answer. And the square bracket, or the less than or equal to, says it is included. So somewhere our answer is in there, somewhere in there. And the last one is the other way round. It includes one in our possibilities for our answers, but it doesn't include three. So three is not included, and our answer is somewhere in there. Let's do that in the other order. Let's look at how it's already written on the number line. So this one we would say negative three is included. 
like that, or we could write it with square brackets. That's interval notation. And this one has open circles, so the one and the four are not included. And we'd write it with round brackets. Sometimes, these, these are just basic review things. Sometimes you might talk about a number in the range of 12 plus or minus 4. That means we're talking about a number that would be 12 minus 4 say is less than or equal to whatever we're talking about, which is less than or equal to 12 plus 4. So 8 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 16. So somewhere between 8 and 16 is our possible answer. The reciprocal means flip it. So 3, the reciprocal of 3 is 1 over 3. Those parallel straight lines, it means forget about the sign. So the absolute value is what it is. And you do have that button on your calculator. And the absolute value of negative 3. Forget about the sign, it's just 3. Obviously, the absolute value of 3 is also 3. Factorial notation, also you have a button on your calculator. And so 6 factorial might be written 6, or is written 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and whatever that is a big number okay sometimes and we're going to do more of this in the next topic we do use letters instead of numbers here these are just the rules let's look at this first rule it says that 3 to the power of 4 times 3 to the power of 2 is 3 to the power of 4 plus 2 which is 3 to the power of 6. Now you can do it on your calculator, but it's easy like that. 3 to the power of 4 divided by 3 to the power of 2 is 3 to the power of 4 minus 2, which is 3 to the power of 2. 3 to the power of 4 times itself, 2 times like that, is 3 to the power of 4 times 2, which is 3 to the power of 8. And we'll do this in topic 2. Then we can have negative powers. Again, we'll do more of this in topic 2. But let's just do some numerical examples. 3 to the negative 2 means 1 over 3 squared. 3 to the 2 is 1 over 3 to the negative 2. 2 to the negative 5 is 1 over 2 to the 5, and 1 over 3 to the negative 4 is equal to 3 to the 4. Now, not only do we have indices, but we have what are called roots as well. If we know that 5 times 5 is 25, and negative 5 times negative 5 is 25, then we can say that the square root of 25, that's what that notation is, is either 5 or negative 5. If 2 to the power of 3 is 8, then undoing this, the cube root of 8 is 2. Now it's not negative 2, it's just 2. If the cube root of 46, now I had to look this up on my calculator and I got that this was 3.583, then what we can write is that 3.583 cubed equals 46. Now the next one we don't have to use our calculator because it tells us if 8 to the power of 5 is equal to 32768 then the fifth root of 32768 must be 8. Logic in reverse. No workings required for that last one. Okay, we could do this. Some calculators will be easier to do um, than others because you can use the fraction button. But if you don't have a fraction button, just be careful that that means 81 to the power of negative bracket 1 over 2. 
you have to lead the calculator by the hand. And this one you could do on your calculator if you've got a fraction button. And the same for this one, you could do that like that, using the rules to simplify. And we'll do a lot of simplifying when we come to topic two. Okay, percentages. 20%, right, 20%, a percentage is just a fraction out of 100. So 20% is 20 out of 100. And we could simplify that. That's 2 out of 10 by dividing top and bottom by 10. Divide by 2, and it's 1 out of 5. Um, we can find R percent, any number percent of any number, by just putting that number over 100 and multiplying. So 25% of 50 would be 25 out of 100. I think my dog has moved closer. Times 50. I'm just going to go and remove the dog. I'll be right back. Okay, dog is now outside. All right, so what we're doing is we're saying 25% is 25 out of 100 times 50. So 25 times 50 is 1, 2, 5, 0 oh, over 100. And we can divide by 10. So then we've got 1, 2, 5 over 10. And then we can just divide 125 by 10 and get 12.5. This one's a little bit different. It says 23% of a consignment is bad. There's 34.5 kgs of bad bananas. How many kgs were in the consignment in the first place? Right, so we have to go the other way. To find 100%, We'd say 34.5 over 23 times 100 will give us our answer. Okay, we'd need to do that on the calculator, or maybe not. Um, but whatever, it comes out to be 150 kilos. Okay, so these notes will be on your podia for your class so you can follow along there. Okay, thanks for watching.